Uh, the first step that's involved in any 5-axis setup is to define the machine tool uh, you know, in the machine setup dialog. So as you go into your machining browser, uh, you know, whether you're running RhinoCam or VisualCam or VisualCam for SOLIDWORKS or LibreCam, the workflow would be very similar. So the first step is you go into the machine tool setup dialog and there's two ways how you can define your machine tool. Uh, we could do a manual definition or we could use load from file uh, which uses an XML file and has some machine models uh, that are uh, associated to it to represent the machine tool as well. So in the manual methods uh, we would select the number of axes over here so for five axes we'll select five axes and then you have the configurations. Uh, we currently support three different configuration types head-head uh, configuration where the rotation of the uh, two rotational axes occurs on the spindle where the part remains stationary on the machine. We have a table head configuration which is a combination of a rotary table and a rotary head or a table table configuration uh, where you have two rot rotary tables uh, which means the part rotates in the two rotational tables and the z-axis remains normal so there's no rotation on the, uh, the spindle itself. So to give you a pictorial representation of these I'm just going to jump back into uh, our slides in here uh, to show you the three different configurations I'm referring to here. So. Uh, the one over here on the left that you're looking at is a head-head configuration uh, where you can see there's a primary rotational axis and a secondary axis so the rotation happens on the spindle so uh, this is typically the case when you have uh, CNC routers or mills where you have larger parts that needs to be machined and they're basically the parts remain stationary on the bed of the machine it's a fixture on the machine and the head can rotate or tilt to get to different orientations to machine the part so we call this as the head-head configuration. Uh, the next configuration is a table-head configuration where you have a rotary table. Uh, one of the axes could be a rotational axis, could be on the table. Another one would be a head rotation. So there's just one rotational axis on the head and one on the table. So this would be a, a table-head configuration. And then you have the table-table configuration where uh, both the rotation is on the table like a trunnion type of setup uh, where the part basically uh, is oriented or rotated to different uh, angles uh, depending on the type of operations that you program. So these are the three uh, different types of five axis uh, machine configurations uh, we currently support in our five axis module. So as we go into the configuration in here, you'll see that there's a choice to select from each of these configuration types. The other process is using a load from file. So as you select load from file, uh, this will give you uh, an option to select a list of machine, um, machine tool from the list of machine tools that are included in here. And as you can see, there's a bunch of different machine tools and you have machine tools right from three to five axis in here. So for example, if I pick a, a five axis machine tool, I'm going to go ahead and select a five axis uh, router in here and we'll go ahead and um, take a look at the uh, definition. So as you can see, when you select the five axis machine tool, it automatically displays the machine tool model. And it shows your each of these linear axes, the primary axis, the x-axis, the z-axis, the c, your c-axis, and your secondary axis is defined about the b-axis. And uh, as you can see right here, uh, you can select each of these and you can change, you can see the rotation here. That's your c-axis, which is your primary axis, as you're noticing it right there. And depending on how you define it in the XML file, you can establish the kinematics for these by setting these parameters in the XML file and you have your secondary axis right in here where you can see the rotation of the axis position. So you can define the machine tool using uh, the load from file and you can, uh, we can help you build a machine tool model. So if you send us the information about your machine tool and also send us the sample models for each of these axes in here, we can help you put together. And all of these machine tool models can be located in the machines folder in your uh, install directory. So if you're running Rhino Cam, you'll find it in the Rhino Cams directory, or it could be in the Visual Cam or Visual Cam for SolarWorks or Alibre Cam. So we can establish these uh, kinematics and also the rotary axis limits. All of these parameters can be defined in the um, XML file. So here you have a five-axis head-head configuration machine 
I'm going to give you an example of a five-axis table table machine, like a Trunnion type of machine tool in here. So that's a five-axis uh, table table configuration. Now, if you switch from load from file back to manual definition, you will notice that it automatically sets the uh, machine configuration, the rotary centers, and the rotary axis parameters for the machine tool that you just selected in here. So you could pick uh, from uh, one of these machine tools if the machine tool that you're working on is already listed in here. If it is not, you can use the manual definition option or you can provide us with your machine tool information and we can help you add this into a list. To go over this, I'm going to go ahead and um, bring in an example of like a, um, like a turbine blade model in here. And again, on this particular example, we already have it roughed out using a three-axis roughing tool pad. Now you could uh, use a machine tool model to simulate this, so you want to make sure that you toggle on the machine tool visibility, and as you select play, um, I need to make sure that I display the stock geometry in here as well. And as you select play here, it shows your simulation with the machine tool. So here is the roughing process. I'm just going to go ahead and do a pause and simulate to end to skip through the roughing process in here. So we have the um, stock rough down to the close shape of the finished part and then we have programmed a between two curve machining operation so here I have selected two curves as drive curves in here these two are my drive curves and then I have this surface selected as my drive surface so the toolpath morphs between these two curves and again the normals are derived based on the drive surface that you've selected in here so this would be a drive between two curve machining operation in five axis and you have similar controls for your cut parameters uh, tool axis control, your cut levels if you want to do multiple passes, and you can control your entry and exit and the gouge check parameters. So in this particular example, I've used these two uh, side walls of the blade as the gouge check surfaces. And I've set it to uh, basically leave out the gouging points, as you notice here, so it's not riding along these side walls. And I'm going to run a verification for this. And with the machine tool uh, being displayed, machine tool simulation selected here, you'll be able to see the linear and the rotational axis motions. So you could be programming a combination of uh, different five axis toolpath methods and you could do a combination of both indexed and simultaneous methods as you're programming the part. So over here we are cleaning up the side of the blades using a swarf machining tool pad. And then I've applied a flow curve machining or follow curve machining tool pad to clean up the top half of the blade section. So you could use a combination of different techniques to program this part effectively. 